Hey there, I'm Jack. Life was pretty darn good. Successful, married to a stunning lady named Miranda. But you know how these stories go, right? Hold on to your hats. My beautiful wife Miranda was a few years younger than me, clocking in at 47 but looking like a solid 35. She had this personality that could melt glaciers. Seriously, I've never met anyone as charming as her. She always knew how to say the right things, a real silver-tongued charmer. Conversation flowed like a river when she was around. To me, her personality was worth its weight in gold. Now let's talk about her job. She had a degree and was a certified public accountant, CPA, heading the accounting department at a massive downtown hospital. We're talking billions of dollars flowing through her office every year. The responsibility on her shoulders was staggering, and that meant late nights at work were par for the course. I got it, you know? It came with the territory, and I never once gave her grief about it. Supportive partner, that's me. Funny thing is, we met back in college. She was just starting out, and I was there, grabbing a couple of courses to snag my real estate license. Love? Yep. It hit me like a freight train. But I never pried into her life before we crossed paths. Wasn't important. We dated exclusively for nearly a year. And then, bam, a ring and a marriage proposal changed everything. So, Miranda and I tied the knot in a beautiful wedding and had an epic honeymoon. Life was peachy. But when we got back from our honeymoon, Miranda had big plans for her degree. Sure, it took a bit longer to graduate thanks to the arrival of our two incredible kids. Meanwhile, I was raking in the dough and we even hired a nanny to help Miranda finish her degree. She did just that and got snapped up by a major accounting firm in Dallas right away. Our trusty nanny stuck around until the kiddos hit school age. She busted her tail and kept climbing the career ladder, headhunted by another accounting firm, then poached by the hospital. It felt like she was getting promoted every other year until she became the big boss in the accounting department. That was a good five years back, and she's been loving it since. Now, I'm a licensed real estate broker specializing in commercial properties. Juggling four different agencies, I've always got a nice stash of listings, not just in Dallas but also in Oklahoma City and Little Rock. My job takes me on the road quite a bit between these cities. Our kids, Leo and Zara, they're something else. Leo's already got his college degree and is working out in San Francisco. Zara, well, she's still hitting the books here in Dallas and planning a June wedding right after she wraps up her degree in May. I've got high hopes she'll join me in the business after tying the knot. Zara's got a bunch of her mom's traits, and those skills are worth their weight in gold. She's gonna do great. Back to a year ago in Starbucks. I'm sitting in Starbucks, as I usually do, trying to get in touch with Miranda. Every day around 4.30, I'd give her a call to see when she'd be heading home and to chat about dinner plans, going out, grabbing some takeout, or cooking up something at home. You see, Fridays were sacred to us. We'd been married for a solid 25 years, and I could count on one hand the times we didn't go out on a Friday night. Even if work was hectic, we'd wrap things up and hit the town. We were the type who kept our work at the office although every now and then we had to head back on the weekend to tie up loose ends. But Friday night was our time to unwind. Update. I got to Starbucks a tad early to pester Miranda about dinner, so I decided to kick back with a cup of coffee first. Across the street was the hospital, and to my left was this big parking garage. Now, that garage had a pedestrian bridge that stretched high above the road, linking it to the hospital. There were five exits from the garage and two lanes on the road were reserved exclusively for people coming out of the garage. I wasn't paying much attention, but I did happen to notice a hefty Chrysler 300 rolling out of the garage. It came to a stop at a traffic light right in front of Starbucks. What caught my attention was that Miranda was in the passenger seat. Now that was strange because she'd always keep me in the loop about any meetings outside the hospital. I was in Starbucks and I needed answers. With my phone in hand, I called up Miranda's office, hoping to get some clarity. But what I heard was a shocker. They told me she had wrapped up her work for the day. Confusion swirled in my mind. So, I decided to bypass the office and dial Miranda's number directly. After three rings, she answered, and I couldn't help but blurt out, Miranda, where are you? Her response? I'm in my office, swamped with this crucial report that needs wrapping up. Here's where it gets interesting. I was at Starbucks with big plans, ready to celebrate a significant sale and whisk Miranda off to our favorite Austin restaurant. I even had thoughts of us spending the night there, but all she could muster was, I can't tonight, but can I get a rain check? Then came the kicker. 
Are you in Starbucks across from the hospital? I thought you were in Oklahoma City. I confirmed I was indeed at Starbucks, and no travel had been on my agenda. The burning question in my mind, did she realize I'd seen her? I tried to extend an olive branch, offering to bring her coffee and a salad to fuel her through that report. She mumbled something I couldn't quite catch, then mentioned one of her colleagues had left her a sandwich and a soft drink. Miranda added, Pick something up on the way home for yourself, and I'll be there as soon as I can. Curiosity getting the best of me, I checked my phone's location app, seeing their car had now parked at a famous address I knew all too well, the Hilton Hotel. Are you in your office now? I asked. Yes, came her response. I decided to give her some space and said, I'll see you at home if you don't want my company. I can get the work finished quicker on my own. With a resigned, okay, see you later, I hung up. Miranda and I had what felt like a fairy tale life, basking in financial comfort. We drove fancy cars, all courtesy of yours truly. Our home was a sprawling ranch on five pristine acres, meticulously landscaped. It resembled a park more than a residence. When not at work, we were inseparable. To an outside observer, it was evident that we were deeply in love and fully committed to each other. Miranda made sure to dance with me exclusively at social events, even if I said it was okay for her to dance with other men. Her response was always that she didn't want another man's hands on her. She never gave me a reason to feel jealous. I never once entertained the thought of Miranda being unfaithful. It never crossed my mind. I believed our bed life was fantastic. I was wholeheartedly devoted to her, and she was well aware of my stance on infidelity. I sympathized with Miranda, but she seemed content and happy. I couldn't have imagined that if she wasn't satisfied at home, she would seek satisfaction elsewhere. I sat there for several minutes, feeling emotionally devastated. It was as if my entire world had crumbled around me. Several people asked if I was okay. Eventually, I just stood up and drove home. I was sitting alone in the dark when Miranda returned home. She asked, Why are you sitting in the dark? I've had a terrible day and I'm upset, okay? What's your next question? We never snapped at each other, but I felt justified in my inquiry. You mentioned earlier that you were excited about closing a significant sale, so why are you upset now? She replied, Because I've recently learned some very disturbing news. I inquired, What could be so terrible? She responded, if you don't know, then you've got no reason to ask. I stood up and poured myself a large brandy, then took it into the den and sat down. I skipped dinner so the brandy hit me quickly. I remained in the den for about 30 minutes before getting up and heading to the guest bedroom to sleep. I spent the night tossing and turning, unable to shake the impact of what she had done to our marriage. And then I wondered if this might not have been the first time. How long had she been deceiving me? One thing was certain. I wouldn't tolerate being made a fool of. Eventually, I rose from a troubled night of little sleep. After a quick shower, I stumbled into the kitchen in search of coffee. Miranda was seated at the table and spoke first. She said, Good morning. How did you sleep in the spare bedroom? I slept terribly, to be honest. I don't think I even got an hour of sleep. Can you tell me what's bothering you so much? I looked at her, utterly baffled by her question before responding. Miranda? Is there something you want to talk about? What do you mean? Are you upset because I had to work on a Friday night and we couldn't go out to dinner? When did work become more important than family? We've always dropped everything on Friday nights and enjoyed a night out. Maybe work has become more enjoyable than spending time with me. Who is he? She gave me a confused look and clearly didn't want to answer. She grew restless, got up, and started a new pot of coffee, trying to avoid the question. I continued. I saw you. I even called your office, and they said you had left for the day. I know you went to the Hilton. Game over, how could you do this to us? To me, to our family, I thought we meant more to each other than some cheap affair. I'm sorry I never intended for this to happen. I've been fighting it for over a year, and in the end I was weak. My body responded, and I got lost. His name is David Alexander, my boss. We tried to be discreet so you wouldn't find out. I am so deeply sorry. First of all, you're well aware of my stance on infidelity. Our marriage is over. I have never been so hurt in my life. I've been betrayed by my best friend, my lover, my soulmate, my wife. We've always shared everything. Never in my wildest dreams did I think this would ever happen. At this point, I'm not even sure if I want to continue living. If we didn't have children, I know what path I would choose.
Update. Miranda was crying hard at this point. She could see the pain I was in, but I didn't want her pity. Finally, she regained some control and asked, Is there anything I can do to repair our marriage? The simple answer is no. But right now, I'm not thinking clearly, and I can't make a decision about this. However, there might be some steps you can take to regain your self-respect. First and foremost, the affair has to end immediately. You need to file a physical offense case against your lover because it seems like he took advantage of you. Both of you might lose your jobs because of that, but it's the right thing to do. Finally, you should quit your job and then file a lawsuit against the hospital. You're a CPA, and finding a good job shouldn't be a problem. She paused for a moment and said, I'm not sure if I can agree to all of that. I got up to leave the kitchen. Where are you going? I'm leaving. I'll let you know where I'm staying. Tomorrow I'll consult with a lawyer and I'll try to make this as painless as possible. However, both you and your lover will not come out of this unscathed. You can mark my words on that. I won't be a fool. I'll call the kids this afternoon and let them know their mother cheated. Please leave the kids out of this. Aren't they a part of this family too? Yes, but I don't want them to be hurt by this. It's a little too late to worry about that. They are adults and need to know. You're just worried about your reputation. With that said, I packed two suitcases, gathered my business items, and loaded the car. When I returned to the kitchen, Miranda was still sitting at the table, crying. Miranda, do all the things I've asked and if you want to talk, I'll be willing to sit down and discuss our marriage. I'll let you know where I'm staying. And with that, I was gone. I wondered if I would ever step foot in my house again. Our local Holiday Inn served a delicious breakfast, so that's where I ended up. I inquired about a weekly professional rate and made reservations for two weeks. I texted Miranda and informed her of my whereabouts. I questioned why I did it, but old habits are tough to break. The following day, which was Sunday, I spent the entire day in my room, lost in thought and wallowing in self-pity. I recognized the need to talk to my children, so I sent them a text message, urgently requesting to speak with them about some important yet unfortunate news. Both of them promptly replied, asking me to call immediately. I broke the heartbreaking news to them that their mother had cheated on me and had been involved in an ongoing affair for the past few months. They inquired about how I had discovered it, and I shared the details. They were devastated but assured me of their support. They had numerous questions, but I had few answers. I informed them that I had moved out and was staying at the Holiday Inn near our old house. Sadly, we bid each other goodbye. Miranda called within minutes. How could you turn our kids against me? I didn't turn our kids against you. Your actions have hurt our children, and that's what you're hearing. I told you I was going to tell them. I won't inform your friends or your parents. That's your responsibility. Be aware, though, that the truth has a way of surfacing eventually. I had just hung up the phone with her when there was a knock at the door. It was my daughter, Zara. She came in and we held each other, both shedding tears. She understood my pain, and I was grateful to have someone to share it with. We talked for over an hour, and she wanted every detail, which, unfortunately, I didn't have much of. Finally, Zara mentioned that she was going to see her mother. About two hours later, I received a text from Zara, urging me to talk to mom because there was much more to the story than I knew. I replied with an, okay. Somewhat reluctantly, I called Miranda. I know Zara has been to see you, and she asked me to call and talk. I promised her I would, so let's talk. What I'm going to say will hurt. Are you sure you want to hear it? Yes, you've told Zara, and she obviously thinks I need to hear it too, so let's hear it. So she disclosed the entire story of her affair, albeit reluctantly at first, but she had been an active participant since then. The narrative was painful to hear. The good-looking guy is more than 10 years younger than Miranda, and over 15 years younger than me. I was furious and determined to confront him for wrecking my marriage. While it was understandable why Miranda got involved with him, it didn't excuse the fact that she had cheated on me. Not just once, but consistently for months. I couldn't get past that. My lawyer, Sam, is a personal friend, so I called him at home and explained the situation. He advised me to come to his office first thing the next day. Sam is a friend outside the office, but he's always professional in a business setting, and I knew he charged his clients, even friends, appropriately. I informed him of my intentions regarding Miranda filing for divorce, serving her, and then waiting for the 90-day period. I wanted immediate legal action against her lover. I insisted on suing him for physical offense, 
and also pursuing a lawsuit against the hospital. I believe there should be some moral clauses in the hospital's policies, particularly when upper-level management takes advantage of subordinates. They should bear some responsibility, even if the lawsuit didn't lead anywhere. It would at least generate unwanted publicity. I asked Sam if there was any way to discreetly inform this guy's wife today that her husband had been having an affair. Sam, the clever lawyer that he is, phoned David Alexander's home and spoke to the wife, posing as an accountant from the Hilton. He inquired about several credit card charges over the past three months and explained that there was a corporate rate that could save David a lot of money in the future. David's wife took about 10 seconds to grasp the situation. I'm sure she would be furious with him as well. An hour later, I received a phone call from Miranda. Why have you already brought disgrace to David's family? Are you at work? Have you accepted any of my proposals? I replied, Yes, I'm at work, and I'm still considering your proposals. That was the wrong answer. I had already consulted with Sam, and I had asked him to delay the divorce paperwork until I saw your response. Now I know. I hope you have a great life. Without waiting for a response, I hung up the phone, feeling hollow. My last hope for some form of redemption had disappeared. Miranda wasn't willing to consider any of the options I had suggested. I called Sam and instructed him to serve Miranda and proceed with the divorce as swiftly as possible. I didn't want any delays. I went to the bank and divided our accounts. We had always shared a joint account where our paychecks went. We never separated our finances into his and hers. I divided everything evenly, opened a new account in my name only, and ordered new credit cards. I informed my workplace and had my accounts transferred to one of the other brokers. I also took 30 days of vacation. I needed a break to clear my head, so I decided to go to Jamaica. Update. Sam acted swiftly. The next day, Miranda was served and charged with adultery. David Alexander was sued, as was the hospital. I wasn't entirely sure if I had a valid case against Alexander or the hospital, but it provided some satisfaction. I didn't anticipate Miranda objecting or contesting the divorce. I informed everyone who needed to know that I would be away for the next 30 days. I wasn't certain if I would have access to email or cell phone signal. I purchased some beachwear and a good pair of running shoes and left abruptly. I felt like I was running away, but then I questioned what I was fleeing from. A cheating wife? Jamaica turned out to be enjoyable. I wanted to stay active, so I ran on the beach every morning. Initially, I could only manage short distances, but within two weeks, I was running three miles. I shed excess weight and became a sun-kissed beachgoer, relishing every moment. I even looked into the real estate market and found that property was surprisingly affordable compared to the prices I had seen. I envisioned retiring at the early age of 53. Even after dividing our accounts, I still had a substantial amount of money with no outstanding bills. The family house would also bring in money when it was sold. After careful consideration, I put a deposit down on a two-bedroom beachfront bungalow. It was conveniently close to shops, restaurants, and bars. This change allowed me to disconnect from the world, a welcome break for someone accustomed to constant stress. I knew I had to return to Dallas to handle the legal proceedings. I didn't hold high expectations for the lawsuits, but I needed to check in and see what was happening. Closing bank accounts, transferring money, and visiting my kids were on my agenda, especially since Zara's wedding was approaching. I reached out to Zara and she picked up on the first ring. Dad, it's so great to hear from you. Where have you been? I replied, I've become a beach bum and that's my new calling. Anyway, I'm back for your wedding. Is everything going as planned? Zara assured me, yes, it's still scheduled for a week from Saturday and all is set. Mom has been a tremendous help since she quit her job. This caught my attention. Mom quit? Zara explained. Dad, she resigned that first Tuesday afternoon after you left and she sued that guy and the hospital on Wednesday. If she could have found a suitable lawyer, she would have done it on Monday. I started to feel uneasy. Why didn't she inform me? Zara responded. Dad, where have you been? Did you have cell phone or email access? She tried so many times to reach you, and we eventually gave up. I didn't really know how to reply. I began with, no, there was no cell phone reception or email where I was. In fact, I've only just turned on my cell phone for the first time. I see there are numerous texts and emails waiting. Mom has also been seeing a counselor twice a week for the past month. She's made a sincere effort to regain her former self. I've spent most of my time with her. She's a wreck and desperately needs someone with her. I acknowledged her words, 
but affirmed that my marriage with her mom was history. I'm not certain I can ever trust her again, especially since she had the best act ever with her lover. Why would she want to return to me when what I can offer is good for me but ordinary for her? Mom loves you, and I don't think the physical aspect is an issue anymore. I'll talk to your mom, maybe today, but I'm not making any promises. I believe our marriage is beyond repair, but I assure you we'll be a couple for your wedding. I don't want anything to spoil my child's big day. After the phone call, I visited Sam's office to check on the progress of our legal actions. The divorce was proceeding, and the judge would finalize it within 30 days. The two other legal cases were more complicated. David Alexander had lost his job and had a divorce action pending against him as well. His life had taken a significant hit. The hospital was denying any responsibility. Sam mentioned that Miranda had cases against both of them, and he believed her chances were better than ours. I decided to drop our case against Alexander, but keep the hospital case open to see how they would respond. The initial hearing was scheduled in two weeks. From Sam's office, I headed to my own. I informed the office manager about my retirement plans and that I wouldn't be returning. I wasn't wealthy, but living in Jamaica was affordable, and I could manage on a budget for quite some time. Plus, we still had the proceeds from selling our house. I needed to discuss this with Miranda because she was still living in the house. So for the first time in several weeks, I found myself pulling up to my house. The last time I was here, I wasn't sure about returning. Miranda opened the front door before I could step out of the car. Hello, Jack. You look fantastic and so tan. You've also lost weight. I replied, yes, the last four weeks have been good to me. My old clothes don't fit me anymore. We settled in the kitchen, and Miranda brewed a fresh pot of coffee. We have a lot to discuss, and I'm not sure where to begin. You know our divorce will be finalized in 30 days. We'll need to divide the property, including the house. What would you like to do with the house? Miranda replied, I haven't really thought that far. I suppose we could sell it, although I hate to let it go. It's been our home since we got married. Would you like to buy my share and stay here? No, the house is too large for just one person and it holds too many memories, mostly good ones. I can't stay here, so I guess we should list it. Do you know any good real estate agents? Miranda said, I'm sure I can find a realtor, but I can't sell our home because I've just submitted my retirement paperwork. After Zara's wedding, I'm going back to Jamaica to live. I feel at home there, with no cell phone or email connections. It's a completely disconnected life, and I love it. I've been able to exercise daily, eat well, and not only get fit, but also shed all the weight I've been trying to lose for so long. Those are my plans. What about yours? I don't have any plans. I'm just taking it day by day, trying to move past how I ruined our marriage. I'll be okay. Find an apartment near Zara and eventually return to work. I'm not rushing back, but someday I'll run out of my share of our money. How can you afford to retire? I explained. Living in Jamaica is inexpensive. It's a simple life, and I don't need all the luxuries we have here. I can live there without touching my savings or selling stocks. I'll be fine. This house should sell for a million, so we'll have that to share too. Have you seen Zara? Miranda replied, No, but I spoke to her on the phone for nearly an hour this morning, and I made her a promise that I hope you'll help me keep. I assured Zara that we would attend her wedding together. I want nothing to mar her special day. Do you know when Leo's flying in for the wedding? He's arriving next Wednesday, and I had planned to meet him at DFW unless you'd like to. I thought it would be nice if he stayed here at the house. I'd like to accompany you to the airport to welcome Leo. It's been over a year since we've seen him, and maybe we should greet him together. I'd appreciate that. This house is quite large. Would you like to stay here as well? It'd be nice to have everyone under one roof again, especially since we're hosting the reception here after the wedding. The big marquee will be set up on Monday and the caterers have all the food and drinks ready. That's how it unfolded. Miranda and I seemed to reconnect just like before the affair. We could talk without getting angry and communicated rationally. We worked together tirelessly to organize Zara's wedding, and having Leo there to help was a blessing. The night before her wedding, Zara stayed in the house with all of us. We sensed the tension, but having our family together one more time was very special. We all knew the house would be gone by next year, and there would be no more family gatherings in our old home. Zara's wedding went off without a hitch. She looked stunning, and I felt like I had lost my daughter. I knew her husband was a great match, but I secretly hoped he realized the real treasure was Zara. The place was adorned with fresh flowers, 
and champagne flowed all night. We had one of the top bands from Dallas, and the dancing continued into the early hours of Sunday. Miranda and I danced together for most of the night. I had pledged to Zara that we would attend as a couple, and I don't think we disappointed anyone. Miranda looked fantastic, and I shared many dances with her. I found my body responding to her just as it had in the past. I was a bit drunk and overwhelmed. I might regret this in the morning. Suddenly, Miranda said, You know, Jack, if we share a bed tonight, we'll be sharing more than just the bed. What's bothering you, Jack? Please do it one more time for old time's sake. Please? Miranda, I'm sorry, but I can't do this. I know you're still involved with someone else. I can't believe you. I left Miranda in tears, packed my bag, and drove to the Holiday Inn. My cell phone woke me up the next morning, and it was my son. Dad, what did you say to mom last night? She cried all night. Son, this is a bit awkward to tell you, but she's still having a relationship with someone else. I'm not happy right now. I know you're flying back today and I'll come over in two hours to drive you to the airport, but I don't want your mother to come along and I don't want to see her. I stayed for an additional three days before returning to Jamaica. Sam had received a settlement offer from the hospital. They offered half a million, but we settled out of court for three quarters of a million, and after taxes and Frank's fees, I was left with half a million. That would go a long way. I said my goodbyes to everyone except Miranda and boarded my plane for the next chapter in my life. Update. Life was great. I spruced up my little beach bungalow and bought a used jeep. I kept up with my beach runs and sunbathing. Now and then, I'd receive mail or a postcard from one of the kids. One day, I received a letter from Sam. He filled me in on all the news. My divorce had gone smoothly and now I was a free man. Miranda had won both her court cases, with the hospital paying her five million, and Alexander being charged a million he couldn't afford, leading to his bankruptcy. Good for Miranda. She was financially set for life and wouldn't have to worry about money. Sam also mentioned that the house was sold and most of the furniture was put in storage. There was no word about where or how Miranda was living, not that I really cared. She had hurt me once and I wasn't going through that again. I heard from Zara about once a month and she always teasingly called me a fool and assured me that mom was doing fine, telling me not to worry. I couldn't help but worry that Zara had given up on me. Leah wasn't the best at staying in touch, but I wasn't concerned because he had a busy social life. Several wonderful months passed, and gradually I began feeling like a human again, and started desiring the company of a lovely woman. Just a few miles away were the main commercial areas of the island, where many resorts made the island famous. Quite a few middle-aged women came to these resorts for various reasons. The resorts hosted dances three or four times a week, and it was rare that I couldn't find a nice-looking woman to chat with. This usually involved lots of dancing and wine. That's how I met Dolly. She was petite, around five or two, with brown hair and striking deep blue eyes. Dolly worked as an investment broker and needed a break from the stock market's stress and the daily grind of making money for people. We danced the night away and enjoyed plenty of wine. The music was still playing when she suggested we step outside for some fresh air. We strolled down to the beach, and she suddenly kissed me. We talked, and I found out she was staying at the resort for a month. I proposed showing her around the island, and naturally we ended up back at my bungalow. She was very open about her desires and didn't hesitate to mention that she had a lot of partners in her life. Dolly, despite being 38, had never been married or had kids and hadn't found the right person yet. She wasn't certain about having children, but definitely wanted to meet the right partner and settle down eventually. Dolly spent the entire month with me in my bungalow, only returning to the resort to fetch more clothes. I've never connected with anyone the way I did with Dolly. We never explicitly said, I love you, but there was an unspoken understanding that conveyed that message without us having to utter the words. As her 30-day vacation was coming to an end, neither of us wanted to spoil the mood by discussing what would happen when she left. The night before Dolly was set to depart, we moved her back to her room at the resort. There was a dance that night, as was customary before a large group left. Naturally, we attended, given our shared love for dancing. Things were heating up on the dance floor when I spotted her across the room. She was in a booth and getting intimate with someone. Dolly immediately sensed something was wrong and asked me about it. I simply mentioned that I had seen my ex across the room engaging in inappropriate behavior with her boyfriend, whom I thought had disappeared long ago. 
I told Dolly that I had to say something to them, so we approached their booth. Miranda, it seems my suspicions were right, and you never stopped seeing this guy, I said. Miranda pushed David away and began straightening her dress. What are you doing here? She asked. I live here, have you forgotten? You told me your affair was over and that you never wanted to see this guy again. What's going on? Were those all lies? David got out of the booth and tried to confront me. You're divorced now, so who Miranda sees and what she does is none of your concern. Although I'll admit that we never stopped sleeping together. Yes, I suspected as much, I replied. However, I don't appreciate being lied to and deceived. My ex-wife has been doing that. We were once in love and would have never lied to each other. I can only blame you for changing the woman I loved. Your actions broke up both our marriages, and the word jerk doesn't begin to describe the unhappiness you've caused. I should have seen it coming but didn't. He held me up with one hand and continued with his threats. I dropped to the floor. At that point, the bouncers swarmed our table and Dolly explained how this man had attacked me. There were several witnesses to the incident. An ambulance was called and I was rushed to the hospital. I was unconscious. The following morning, after regaining my senses, the police interviewed me. They asked if I wanted to press charges, and naturally I said yes. Dolly was there, holding my hand, and she had been with me throughout the night. The past 30 days have been the most unforgettable and joyful time of my life. I've never had so much fun and felt so comfortable with anyone before. I have to admit, I've fallen in love with you. Please stay with me. Don't go back to work and your old life. I'm not wealthy, but we'd have enough for a comfortable life without ever having to work again. I love you, but I need some time to think about giving everything up. Part of me immediately says yes, but there are some loose ends I need closure on before making that commitment. Can you understand? Take as much time as you need. You know where I live. Dolly kissed me and left as she had a plane to catch. It felt like the second love of my life had just walked away from me. I stayed in the hospital for two days. I heard that Alexander was out on bail but might be facing jail time. I packed a small suitcase and returned to Dallas to see my lawyer. Sam was happy to see me, but shocked to see the state I was in. Jack, what brings you back to civilization? He asked. I need legal advice. Do you remember that I received a small settlement from the hospital? Yes, it was for three quarters of a million. Why? Well, I was wondering if... Since Miranda and I were still technically married, she's entitled to half of that under the community property law. Yes, technically she is, but her settlement was for five million. Why would she want half of yours? I don't know if she's interested or not in my settlement, but I want half of her payment. I was perfectly fine with her having it because I thought she had ended her affair with her ex-boss and agreed to all my conditions. However, I've recently found out that she didn't stop seeing him even after we separated and before the divorce. In fact, she's still seeing him. I informed Sam of her whereabouts, and that same afternoon, he hopped on a plane to Jamaica and hand-delivered the legal documents to Miranda. He later reported that she had already spent a significant chunk of her settlement money. She reluctantly wrote the check. I stayed with Zara and her husband and shared with her what I had uncovered. Zara admitted she had suspicions, but Mom had denied any involvement with David. I asked if she was certain mom was going to the counselor and not to see her lover. Zara wasn't sure. Sam returned the next day with some good news. Miranda had reluctantly agreed to split the money, minus her share of my settlement. I headed back to Jamaica, and upon arriving at my bungalow, I found Dolly sitting on my patio. She said, if you can stand having me around, I'm here to stay. If you'd have me, would you do me the honor of marrying me? Without any hesitation, I said, yes. Update. Dolly and I tied the knot, with some of her friends in attendance. Life was great. Miranda, having spent a good portion of her settlement money, had to return to work and couldn't establish a lasting relationship. As for David Alexander, he spent a year behind bars and faced a grim future upon his release, being a felon, bankrupt, and divorced. 